Welcome to MMA Dogs. My name is Hector, and this is my dog, Dan. And tonight we'll be covering UFC 154. If you guys would just take a look at, the, uh, at our YouTube channel, uh, we're gonna post a link right here to subscribe to our channel. And uh, that gives us you know, the support, and, and we appreciate that. So uh, please subscribe, and you'll receive uh, automatic updates via email to let you know that, hey, we put up a new video. You can check it out, leave your comments and feedback. So thank you, guys. The first fight of the night that we're going to be covering is Steven Seiler versus Darren Elkins. Now, this fight is gonna, isn't going to be on the, main, on the main card, but we are going to cover it because we both have a, a strong opinion on this particular fight. Steven Seiler is coming off of two victories. His last fight, he beat Joey Gambino via submission, and he also decisioned Cold Miller. And Darren Elkins is coming off of a victory over Diego Brandao via decision, and he also beat the Mongolian Wolf via decision. In this particular fight, I have um, in this particular fight, I have Darren Elkins winning via decision. With uh, I feel like with with Steven Seiler, we've we've counted him out um, on and his, at least his last two fights. We've counted him out, and he's gone in there and upset, you know, upset his opponent. And so he is, you know, he is a uh, sneaky guy. You know, you can't count him out. But Darren Elkins, man, that guy has been on a tear. And I know he recently changed fight camps, and he's looking just better and better every single time. So I feel real strong, in, the, in my opinion, on this one. I have Elkins winning via decision, and it's definitely going to be a four-stars. For, for betting advice, four stars. What do you got, Doug? This one is a really awesome battle. Um, I also like Darren Elkins, four stars. Um, it's not so much about how can Darren Elkins win, but how he can't lose. And so the only way I can see him losing this fight is a decision to Steven Seiler, probably the way Steven Seiler beat Cole Miller. Darren Elkins, if he was going to get submitted would have got submitted against the Mongolian Wolf and didn't. He was in like five or six really tight, tight guillotines. He's got really good uh, guillotine defense. Um, so, you know, unless Steven Seiler's got something we haven't seen, uh, like pulls a rabbit out of his hat or something. Um, and if Darren Elkins was going to get knocked out, we probably would have seen it in his last fight against Diego Brandao because we know he got smashed in that first round and managed to uh, pull out the decision victory in that one. So it's kind of like a give or take, you know, Steven Seiler could win a decision, Darren Elkins could win a decision, and, you know, Steven Seiler could also lose by knockout or, or submission. So I'm going to disagree with you on uh, how the fight turns out, but I actually think that Darren Elkins will win. I just think that it's going to be a first, first round submission or, or knockout, but probably a submission. But that's just my opinion. And then as far as, uh, as far as betting advice go, what do you have on that one? This one you have it ranked as yeah this one this one's pretty good I I wouldn't say like bet the farm because you know Steven Seiler is that sneaky little guy that we've counted out already <laughs> but you know Darren Elkins I mean this guy is just getting better I, and better yeah I think Seiler has finally met his uh, his match here I think it's finally going to go down the way the way it should you know the way it should go down and um, for for closing thoughts on this fight I um, I think that Darren Elkins with his ability to to escape submissions. With his, with his chin that he has, and also with his uh, takedowns and wrestling, um, you know, I see him just being a force here, and, and uh, I definitely feel very confident. Four stars, Darren Elkins, all the way. Likewise. All right, moving on to the next fight, we have Mark Hominick going up against Pablo Garza. Hominick is coming off a split decision loss to Eddie Yagen. And before that, he got knocked out in seven seconds by Chan Sung Young. We got Pablo Garza. He's coming off a loss to Dennis Bermudez. And he, the previous fight, he lost to Dustin Poirier via submission. So here we have two guys that are coming off of losses. In this particular case, I have not liked what I've seen out of Mark Hominick. I really haven't. I mean, he just hasn't looked uh, the same since, since the, the passing of Tompkins and and you know it's real unfortunate, you know. So with with this particular fight, I see uh, I see it being one of those matches where Garza will 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 take the will take the victory. 
I have Garza winning via submission, if not a uh, if not a decision. And as far as betting advice goes, I'm going to say Garza uh, is is although Garza is a pick, I'll say do not bet just because you know you really don't know what to expect with Mark Hominick, and uh, and who knows you know he could keep going there um, in his in his home country and uh, end up you know shock everybody maybe knock out Garza or something like that. But uh, as far as betting advice goes, I say do not bet. What do you have, Doug? This is yeah, this is a do not bet for me. You know, it's it's who's gonna win, the machine or the scarecrow? Well, they're kind of. I feel like they're handing Mark Hominick a win in this one with Garza because his Garza are really gonna go out there and do what the Korean Zombie did mm. and do what you know the UFC champion Jose Aldo did and did what newcomer Eddie Yagen did. I mean, he was hurt in all three of those fights. Like you know, Eddie Yagen could have won by a knockout if they had stopped the fight because he was hurt more than once in that. Jose Aldo, I watched that fight again, and you can see Hominick in all kinds of trouble early on in that fight. So, and then obviously the Korean Zombie put a stop to everything faster than anybody else could at that weight class. But, you know, with Hominick going into Canada not once but twice and losing, regardless if one of them was a title fight, and now fighting in Canada again, is he really going to lose three? Yeah, he could. He probably won't. But, you know, this is a lot like the, what happened with Dan Hardy after he fought GSP. He got knocked out in the first round like Hominick did. Then he lost a decision to uh, Anthony Johnson, I think it was. And then he got submitted by Chris Lytle. So, you know, like, Garza could submit Mark Hominick if Hominick decides, you know, I'm going to be the next Dan Hardy and before and, and lose four straight before I actually make a comeback. Um, so uh, I absolutely think that he has the advantage in this fight. But could Hominick, like, like really crap his pants? Yeah, he could. Like, it's just... It's it's just a matter of, of who will. And uh, closing thoughts about it for me, I think that um, Garza could e even go in there coming off uh, not winning in his last two fights. I, I really think that he could also... I mean, he's got a submission over Yves Jabon and, and a knockout over Fred Zimpaijau, um, you know, but he's also been submitted and, and lost decision. So, uh, yeah, just uh, he is coming off injury, so I don't know. Now, what do you have as far as betting advice goes for this? Do not bet. It? Do not bet. Yeah, some closing thoughts on this fight is, uh, you know, it, it could go it could go either way. There's no real determining factor that where we feel like, hey, this guy's gonna win or this guy's gonna win. It is almost like they're beating uh, yeah. Hominick Garza, saying, hey, yeah. here, get a victory. But he's Come so on, man. So inconsistent. So inconsistent. So with this fight, it the you know dead on. Do not bet. Who could win? Even even our picks, you know, aren't real strong. And uh, I would say sit back relax enjoy this fight watch as a fan but uh but yeah do, do not bet all right moving on to the next fight we have chad griggs versus serial diabati chad griggs is coming off a loss to travis brown and a he had a victory over uh valentin overeem and we have serial diabati he is coming off a decision victory over tom de blas and a submission loss to the hippo anthony paroche in this particular fight, I uh, I see Chad Griggs, you know, coming down from heavyweight to 205. <clears throat> when guys make a cut from from when guys move down in weight, you never know how their body's going to respond to that weight cut. You never know what what their uh, training camp is going to be affected like because of this new diet that they have to be on. If they're doing it the right way, a diet. If they're not, and they're just you know starving and doing all this crazy dehydration stuff then that could greatly affect their their skills and abilities in the octagon so that is a big glaring factor in my mind what is chad griggs going to bring at 205 he he could be improved or he could be worse with serial diabati i know what to expect i know what to expect out of him and sometimes he doesn't look so good and sometimes he looks you know better so uh with with chad griggs making that weight cut i have to go with diabati i definitely do and with uh, Griggs not really showing anything on the ground, I have to go with Diabati via submission. With that being said, it is one of those picks where it's just strictly for a pick and not any betting advice on it. I say do not bet on this fight. It's my opinion on it. What do you got, Doug? Uh, yeah, I don't like this fight at all. Like, uh, I really don't know who to choose. Like, I almost don't want to choose anybody, but yeah, it's, it's, very on, it's on the main card. Uh, I'm leaning more towards the Gravedigger over the snake but you know because it's like the snake has submissions and the gravedigger can be submitted but 
and you know the gravedigger wins mainly by 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 knockout i guess or you know tap out to strikes <laughs> hey i saw something really funny since this is, isn't really such a serious fight and we're not going to give any betting advice um is a grave digger gonna dig a grave and throw the snake in it or is the snake gonna bite the grave digger and put him in his own grave <laughs> Yeah, he could. <laughs> he could do that. Yeah, this, this, this is, is what I think is going to happen. I think the yeah. grave digger is going to be digging a grave for somebody else. The snake's going to come along. The grave digger is going to take his shovel and just chop the snake's head off and just throw it in the grave. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, grave digger knockout round one with the grave shovel. Digger knockout round one. Just take the show. Betting advice, dude. Oh no, yeah, do not, not bet. bet. We don't. We do don't. We don't know. Bet, guys. We don't, don't know what don't kind care. of snake is gonna show up. We're gonna see. Are yeah. we gonna see a tiny little garden snake? What's that? What's that movie with? With uh, I think J Lo. J Lo was Anaconda. In it. Anaconda. Yeah. Yeah, are we gonna see the anaconda show up, or are we gonna see you know a little a little garden snake yep. you know, pick up here in the backyard? Yep. Uh, so yeah, do not bet, guys. You know, don't don't mess around with it. There's so many other fights. So many other fights. Why 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 bet on this? Just watch it. Enjoy it as a fan. For the next fight of the night, we have Francis Carmont versus Tom Lawler. Francis Carmont is coming off a submission victory over Carlos Vermola. And before that, he submitted uh, Magnus. And then we have Tom Lawler here. He beat uh, Jason McDonald via knockout. And he got submitted by Chris Weidman. For this, for this particular fight, I see uh, Francis Carmont submitting Tom Lawler. And Francis Carmont, he trains with GSP. The first time, I remember the first few times I watched him fight, particularly his first fight, I wasn't really too impressed with him. I thought uh, maybe it was because of the hype um, around him that people were building up this fight. Oh, you know, he trains with GSP. He's going to go in there. He's going to be the next greatest, best guy. So maybe that all that hype people were building up around him and when I actually watched him fight and paid attention and built my own opinion on it, I really wasn't too impressed. I saw some holes there. But, uh, but he has been steadily improving. And his last fight, I, I definitely liked the way he fought and liked the way that he, uh, he, he went out there and performed. So with this particular fight, I say Carmont via submission. And as far as betting advice goes, I say uh, four stars. I feel very confident in Francis Carmont's abilities here against Tom Lawler. And I'm gonna go with four stars. What do you got, Doug? Yeah, we we both agree on this one. I have uh, Carmont also four stars uh, by submission. You know, Tom Lawler, um, he lost to Chris Weidman, and you know Weidman is the man next to Anderson Silva in that division right now. Um, yeah. And you know he 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 lost to Chris Weidman, but he beat Jason McDonald. A lot of people might not know this, but he got UFC knockout of the night that day. Um, but he actually had a little bit of extra motivation. Um, fighting Jason McDonald that, that, that fight because it was his birthday. So Francis Carmon, who, uh, yeah, he trains with GSP and everything. Um, he looked good against Carlos Vimola, um, but he but for some reason his last two fights in the first round, he, he looks a little bit vulnerable, just just a little bit like, like, he, like he's not going to lose, but he's giving his opponent like a chance to, to, to show their stuff. I agree. I so, agree with that. So it's it's it, yeah he could he could lose to uh he could lose to Tom Lawler but um you know just like I just I really like this Carmone guy a lot and and Tom Lawler is kind of just a hit or miss guy like he yeah. he wins some he loses some you know this time he's probably going to lose some so unpredictable I would I would definitely say four star Francis Carmone yeah so closing thoughts on this fight we both feel very confident in Francis Carmont's abilities. He's on the come up, whereas Tom Lawler, he's just kind of up, down, up, down, up, down, not really doing much. And, and is, he, is, is, is Tom Lawler really going to come on the scene? Is he really the type of fighter going to come on and make an impact like Francis Carmont could make? I, I don't see it come. I don't yeah. see it. So uh, Francis Carmont. For the next fight of the night, and we are both really excited for this particular fight. One of our uh, one of our picks here who, has, uh, who hasn't really ever let us down is fighting. So... Uh, let's just move straight to it. We got Johnny Hendricks going up against Martin Kampman. Johnny Hendricks is coming off a split decision victory over Josh Koscheck. And the fight before that, he knocked out John Fitch in just 12 seconds. And then we have Martin Kampman over here. He fought Jake Ellenberger and knocked him out in the second round. And then he choked out Thiago Alves. 
So, wow, this fight is going to be exciting. And this fight should determine who's going to fight the winner of GSP Carlos Condit. Well, these two fighters, man, these two fighters are both very well-rounded. And um, the way that Johnny Hendricks looked when he went out there and, and fought John Fitch and just went out there, boom, knocked him out. And then he went out there and fought Kashik and, and beat him via decision. You know, you can't ignore that. And then, you know, you take Martin Campman, who, who beat Thiago, Thiago Alves and then um, went out there and, and knocked out Jake Ellenberger. Wow, I mean, both exciting fights, both high caliber opponents. Uh, the, the difference here, the, the difference I see here is that Martin Campman leaves openings and he leaves holes. Would you agree, Doug? I do. He leaves these openings and these holes um, against his opponents. And if he does something like that, which he probably will, he's not going to go out there and fight this perfect fight. It seems like Martin Campman can't stick to the game plan. Mm -hmm. He's an excellent fighter, real talented fighter. But it just, just doesn't look like he, he, his fighting IQ when he's in the octagon, it's just it's all over the place. So you can't trust that. Yeah, you, you, can't, can't. you can't trust a fighter like that. Really, you're going to trust a fighter like that. You can be a fan of his and, and root for him and hey, appreciate his skills. But if you're, if you're analyzing the fight, trying to predict the winner, and also trying to say, hey, this is a betting advice that, that you ought to go with. This is what you should do. This is what we see going. I mean, you just can't pick a guy like Campman. So especially when he's going up against a guy like Johnny Hendricks, who's beat you know, some tough dudes. And uh, with, a fight, with a fight like this, I'm going to have to say um, I'm going to go with Johnny Hendricks via knockout. You know, I see Campman leaving one of those openings. With this, I'm not going to go five star, four star though, because Campman is so well rounded. Um, even though he leaves his opening, he is well rounded and he can't capitalize on things. So I'm going to say um, Hendricks via knockout, and it's going to be a three star, a three star pick. What do you got, Doug? I'm going to upgrade my pick uh, to four star, Johnny Hendricks, uh, first or second round knockout. Um, Martin Campman, very, very uh, inconsistent. Uh, you know, he, he's, he's done well recently. Um, when he fought Tiago Alves, he, he had him hurt pretty early in the fight. Like the first, first, uh, first few minutes of the fight. Um, I remember he, he landed one of those up kicks to the chin mm. and had Tiago Alves really hurt bad. Mm. Well, that was Tiago Alves wake up call. And Tiago Alves was winning the rest of the fight after that, before he stupidly took down Catman and got got caught in that guillotine with like a minute left in the fight. Yeah. So that was that was more of Tiago Alves's fault for the reason why Catman won. Mm. And then you've got the Jake Ellenberger fight where, you know, Jake Ellenberger also had Catman hurt and and Catman survived somehow. And um, you know, he just and, and by the way, going back to the Tiago Alves fight, they were interviewed Catman after the fight. And he actually said he would have won a decision on that one. I don't believe that for a second. But, you know, get the judges, you just can't bet on them. Um, but going to Johnny Hendricks now, you know, who's coming off the split win over uh, Koscheck and the 12-second knockout of John Fitch. You know, what, was the, what, what, did John, what did Johnny Hendricks do after he beat Mike Pierce via split decision? He knocked out John Fitch in 12 seconds. So another split decision win could he go out there and knock out martin campman yes absolutely I, and that's exactly what i think he's going to do we have this theory or i've got this theory anyways that whenever guys win a split decision that's your they, theory dog they don't, that's your they theory. don't that's my theory they don't go out there and want to see a decision they get the extra like like punch it doesn't happen every time but i i mean if you look at like some fighters that go out there and win or lose a split decision they come out there and usually can finish the fight um, in the next fight. Sometimes they get finished, but most of the time, from what I've seen, um, they go there, out there and, and finish a fight early in the first round, possibly the second. There are some facts and some research to that, and I and I have looked into it with him as well. And because uh, at first, you know, I was kind of giving him a hard time and teasing him about it, but but uh, on a serious note, there is some some kind of a trend there. And sometimes you have to look for those kind of things, Doug. So good job on that. Um, some closing thoughts on this fight, Doug. What, what, what do you think here? Four stars. Four, four stars. Four stars John, Johnny Hendricks. What do they call him? The, the big the big rig Johnny Hendricks? Yep. Well, that does it for another episode. Thank you for joining. Please subscribe to the channel. We'll see you guys next time.